Hi, Jimmy. Welcome to the show, Good man. Good day. Glad you're here, man. Oh, it's good to be here. Thank you. This is got a good a, opportunity. Got a couple questions for mm -hmm. you. I since you're out here visiting from Houston, mm -hmm. just, just mm -hmm. get a couple, you know, take a reading of Jimmy Ward, see what's going on. The first question is, you know, recently you and I performed in a local band, Get Big or Go Home, a group led by Hammond organist Robin Down. Can you tell me a little bit about that group and about your history with Robin and just how playing with Robin led to your stint with David Clayton Thomas in Blood, Sweat and Tears? Well, actually, I started playing with Robin Downs when I was 15. And for many years, I would go on tour with them and play dance clubs in the summer and spring when it was not season in Key West. And in the winter, I'd go back to Key West and play in our original band, Leisure Mania. And it was on one of these tours, uh, playing with Robin and Trudy in the summer on the dance circuit, that I ran across uh, David Clayton Thomas for the first time in his band. And although uh, Robin tells the story that I went right into the band from that tour, while on tour with him, it didn't really go like that. It actually took a little longer. I actually returned to Key West, Florida, and after about a six-week stint I was um, with Leisure Mania, I was notified that they needed a guitar player after having met them. In Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Yeah. Okay. And... Um, Ricky Sebastian, one of the drummers that had played with Blood, Sweat, and Tears, who you know, had played with uh, Jaco Pastorius and John Schofield and people like that, Dr. John, he was in one of our bands in, in Key West, our original band, in the, in the winter, and he was now in Blood, Sweat, and Tears. So he recommended that they audition me, and I flew up and I got the job. So, Great. you know, it was quite an exciting experience getting into the band. Great, man. Talk a little bit about uh, what, guitar, what your guitar setup is now for your gigs and for your recording. I you know you're, you know, have quite a bit of a knowledge of different instruments, different amps, and you've probably refined your sound over the years. I personally okay. prefer the tube sound. And I also like the, sta the sound of uh, two amps being played in stereo using stereo chorusing. Because it gives you a little bit of a different type of image. It gives you a more spatial presence in the band especially for chording and for playing behind other soloists. Your chording or your arpeggiation and stuff is a lot more, uh, how shall I say it, it's wider and it finds a better place in the music for me that way. Uh, when you play a solo line, you, you find sometimes that it's better to just play that through one amp, but if you turn off the chorusing and they become mono again, you just double the sound that you had out of one amp. And if they're identical amps, like the ones I use are 30 watt tube amps. Mm -hmm. So that really gives you essentially 60 watts that you could use, but I only really probably use 30 watts of those two 30 watt amps. I mean, I idle them, I run them around five, and I make my tones so that I can play both jazz and blues and rock on those amps. So you don't turn it up to 11? No, no, yet. <laughs> now what kind of guitars are you currently working with on your performance um, and, and when you record? My workhorse guitar is my GNL ASAT uh, Telecaster. It's um, hollow on one side. It has a humbucking pickup in the front, unlike uh, traditional tellies, and it it's able to get more of a jazz type of sound as well as a bluesy, funkier, more rock or blues sound because it has a, a maple fingerboard and still has the trebly single coil tele pickup in the rear. So you can combine, you know... So you get a little bite from it yeah, as well, right? Yeah, you can combine the sound of the humbugger and the, the single coil to, to cover more ground. I can play jazz gigs on it or I can play rock and roll gigs on it or, or record funk or blues on it one, one minute and uh, that night go and play a jazz gig with the same guitar. Plus it's light, it's easy on my back, and it fits in the overhead on an airplane. There you go. So, you know. <laughs> Great. Now, can you tell me about your tenure at Seaside School, how it influenced you, and then tell us about the new school, Vivachi Performance School, that you're opening out in Houston. Well, you know, you actually called me one day, <laughs> if you'll remember, and said, you know, you should go and interview for this job. And I went, what, what? <clears throat> I remember um, when that call came, I was thinking, who's the most unlikely guy I would know to take over this <laughs> teaching position? It was like, 
Jimmy Ward, I can think of School of Rock, you know, like... Right, the, right. Uh, but, um, you know, you were there how many, how many years? Three years, and, and I really loved the experience. And it led to the concept that I'm using for this new school that, um, yeah, tell us about that I'm starting in Houston. It's called Vivace Performance School. And really the concept is to use music that the people want to play. So I began to experiment with giving people what they wanted, i.e. popular songs, blues songs, rock songs, uh, radio songs, even some country songs, which I'd never done before. And I ended up doing that, but I ended up using these pieces of music as vehicles to exemplify music theory, teach them the chord theory involved. Uh, I had kids in the sixth grade learning uh, the cycle of fifths and fourths and learning the 12 most common chord formulas and the scales that went with them and the modes. So I feel like we had so, a really accelerated So along with program. line of sight learning where, hey, learn this lick. Yeah. You gave them some ideas. Yeah. What's happening behind the scenes or in the fun Yeah. Level. And they start to really understand music better um, they get a working knowledge of the keyboard and then they get a working knowledge of the fretboard on the guitar and then they can see how these concepts are applied by the people who wrote the music. That's important. So it's safe to say you're going to apply, if they were to come to Vivace Performance School, these are the kind of things that they're going to be, appro that's going to be your approach to, Without a doubt. to the student. Yeah. Well, Jimmy, it's been a real pleasure having you on this first podcast here at Studio 226. I see you brought your guitar. You want to take us out with a song, man? Sure, I'll play it too. All right, we'll be back in a minute with Jimmy playing a little bit. Thank you.